I don't know how many people are familiar with a product called Postum. I don't know if they make it anymore. It was quite popular in the 50s and 60s, maybe even the 40s. Anyway, it was made with wheat bran and molasses and maybe another form of wheat. And it was uh, meant to be a coffee substitute. So uh, I tried to make my own and it's worked out pretty good. What I do is I buy sprouted wheat flour and I take it and I toast it in either a, a portable convection oven or in the big oven. You just uh, keep turning the flour, keep an eye on it until it's brown. And then I save the toasted flour in a canister. And the flavor does get nice when you, you know, bake the, the flour. And one of the reasons to do this instead of using raw flour is, you know, raw flour could, you know, have some bacteria in it or something. So it, it's good to toast it. So then I take some kind of cup and maybe I put two, three teaspoons of the flour in the cup and then I add some molasses. If you want it sweeter, you could put another sweetener also in it like maple syrup, coconut palm sugar, uh, honey. So then you put a little bit of liquid in it. I don't know if you use dairy. Um, da not using dairy is one of the reasons why Asian people uh, traditionally are not overweight. Anyway, um, I don't use dairy anymore. So I use a non-dairy milk like coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk, you know, something like that. So you just put a tiny bit in with your flour and your molasses and you stir it a lot until it gets really creamy and thick and then you add more of your liquid uh, you know as much as you want and you could either drink it cold or you could heat it up or you could add warm milk to it if you like but the main thing is just put a tiny bit first because it mixes a lot easier when there's not too much too much liquid in it you know make it really creamy and thick then add the rest of your liquid and it's amazing how filling this is. Um, you know what I also did? Um, I buy bananas when they're a good price and I, I let them get really ripe and then I freeze them. So uh, some mornings I, I like to have a, a blender drink. So I take the banana out of the freezer. I let it defrost until it's, you know, a little bit pliable so I could get the skin off. Put that in the blender. And then I add a few spoons of this toasted baked flour to the blender and uh, it helps the drink to thicken up and it, it just makes it so like, I don't know what the word is, hearty, satisfying. And a drink like that could last you like two hours so you don't have to eat breakfast right away. This is especially good if you're going out doing errands and you don't want a heavy meal. And so, again, not just the banana and the flour, but you'd put a little bit of whatever kind of milk you use, dairy or non-dairy. I haven't tried it with juice. I'm thinking that would be much too sweet. So um, what else have I done with this sprouted flour? Mainly the blender drink and the postum. Oh, if you like a chocolatey taste but you don't want caffeine, because cocoa has caffeine in it and caffeine is a drug. Anyway, um, you could get some carob flour. This is a plant-based chocolatey type uh, flavor that uh, many people use as a cocoa substitute. It's really good and it has some nutrition in it. It's not an empty calorie. So um, you could, so with this you can have your banana blender drink or your Postum substitute or your chocolate milk substitute 
uh, and your coffee substitute and uh, it works very well and it's fun to try all these different ideas in the worst case it turns out terrible some of these things you make which is it's not very often but sometimes sometimes I just couldn't handle it let's say I make a cake and, and I did something wrong with it so I'll, I'll toast it extra crispy after that and I'll crumble it up and I'll put it out in the yard for the birds it's very rare when I actually have to put something in the garbage so this is a good way to live frugally because these homemade things um, cost very little compared to what you buy in the store plus they're fresh and you know what's in them and you can control how sweet it is and you can control how much fat is in it so if you have any ideas that uh, I haven't mentioned yet oh the oats that I buy um, I don't like to buy ready-made cereals. It's very difficult to find one with a decent price, especially granola. So I buy oats, regular roll, rolled oats in the big canister, and I put it in the oven or the toaster oven, and I, I stir it. And again, just like the flour, I brown it. Then I let it cool off, put it in the container. It doesn't need refrigeration. And then I use that as a substitute for those packaged breakfast cereals. They're toasted oats. You can eat it just like that, or you could put milk in it and raisins and nuts. It's very, very nice, very healthy. And if you're in the mood for oatmeal, you can use those toasted oats and mix it with water and cook it on the stove for five minutes, and it's just like oatmeal. The only thing is it won't be creamy oatmeal because since you toasted it, you know, they'll all be separate and, and firm, the, the rolled oats. Once again, write me.